The more some people want a particular job, the worse they fear possible rejection will feel. So if we don't think we have a really good chance, we might play it safe and protect ourselves from the heartache that is the job search. Or maybe, just maybe, we're applying for the wrong jobs. In fact, some of these strong money-making pastimes will not even appear on regular job search sites because they're full of danger, intrigue, and yes, a paycheck. Want to play with poisonous snakes professionally? Fancy a funeral gig? How about a honey hunt with giant bees? Here are 15 surprising jobs only the bravest can have. Number 15. Underwater Wildlife Photographers Being a good photographer these days might seem a little easier. You have a phone, you add a filter, you post it. Pretty easy, right? Try snapping a scuba tank to your back, a huge, vast space between you and the water surface, and throw in some dangerous animals that can likely swim better than you, possibly even kill you. That's a typical workday when you're an underwater wildlife photographer. But the truth is, you actually have to be creative too and have a passion for photography and be able to safely execute the work safely submerged underwater. The photographs are often used for scientific purposes too, so that expensive underwater gear has to work properly. There's so much to consider being an underwater wildlife photographer. Your photographs might be all the way landscape or capturing images of ancient man-made structures and objects, ships or jewelry, you name it. Uh, a face mask and snorkel too might work for shallow dives, but for safety reasons, the majority of underwater photographers become certified professional divers. But totally worth it, right? It's a great job for those people who love the water and love to show it off. It's important to empower girls because it's crucial for them to know that their actions matter and what they do can make a difference. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Poo Divers Sometimes work stinks, and for this brave person, it literally stinks. Poo Diver is an actual job and should be taken very seriously. It requires you to take regular deep dives in doo-doo. Think we're joking? Australia, for example, uses a unique and progressive way to deal with sewage and chemicals, and according to Aussie poo diver Brendan Walsh, we get bacteria to break down the solids by aerating them with big stirring machines 24 hours a day. Walsh runs a commercial diving business. Their service includes a full contamination diving, wharf carpentry, underwater cutting and drilling, confined space works, underwater video inspections, all while swimming in sewage and the processing plants are aggressive environments. Moving parts break and brave people like Walsh have to do the repairs. The brave Aussie loves his job though, and every day involves swimming in the stuff. And with no visibility in the poop pools, most of his work is done by feel. He has found all sorts of items down there swimming in the poo, occasionally valuables. So poo diving is nothing to be sniffed at. It's a legitimate career and requires direct contact with engineers to keep a very complicated system working smoothly. Number 13. Serious Dog Sled Patrollers A life in the military has many risks and can be very dangerous. These soldiers, however, don't worry about the dangers of war. Members of Denmark's Serious Dog Sled Patrollers are posted as a military presence in the world's worst environments. The territories are wild, dangerous, desolate, no place for humans, where your only company is your fellow soldiers and your team of dogs. You're gonna need them. In late November, the sun slides below the horizon and doesn't rise again until the end of January. These soldiers and their pups face different kinds of battles, cryogenic winds, quaggy glaciers, frostbite, and polar bears. Just a typical day at the office, right? As they are flattened by stormy winds, temperatures plummet to 40 degrees below zero and lower, they still have a job to do. There's a long-range reconnaissance patrolling. These soldiers have to protect Danish sovereignty of northern and eastern Greenland, an area that includes the Northeast Greenland National Park, the largest national park in the world, and a team of 12 people have that job every day. Can you fathom that? Patrolling is usually done in pairs and using dog sleds. Soldiers can be on their own for months and often without additional human contact. Number 12. Underwater Pizza Delivery Guy Sometimes your food delivery person exceeds your expectations and hopefully you tip them well. But what if you lived underwater and needed a pizza delivery? This person literally does just that. 
Rob Doyle will swim beneath the waves to serve you a slice of pizza heaven to an underwater hotel in a converted research facility. He doesn't just drive up to the front door and knock, so consider that when you tip, too. He straps on scuba gear and dives deep beneath Key Largo, Florida, to deliver pizza pie for an exclusive local establishment located 21 feet beneath the surface. But on top of that, he's the maintenance person responsible for the habitat's smooth operation. He's also a scuba instructor, so you know your pizza will be delivered safely. Doyle is famously known as the Bell Buoy or the Pizza Dough Buoy, so if you need anything while you chill at Jules Undersea Lodge, somewhere that can only be reached underwater, Rob is now your favorite new delivery person. As for the accommodations, the Underwater Sea Lodge is a 50-foot-long steel structure with only two bedrooms and can only be reached through the airlock underneath it. It's been in operation for over 25 years. Number 11. Yellowstone National Park Winter Keeper The Keeper of Winter does have a nice ring to it, especially when your office is Yellowstone National Park. The tough part is the work itself, however. You're outside all the time. Temperatures in Yellowstone range from 0 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the day, and the record low temperature is negative 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Your primary task from December to March is keeping the buildings in the park free of snow. Rooftops of lodges and cabins have to be cleared to prevent the weight of the snow from damaging Yellowstone's landmarks. The average is 150 inches a year. Sometimes it can be double that. You'll need a cross-cut saw to cut the ice blocks and a flat coal shovel to push them off the rooftops. Great winter boots are a must, and a good team is your best asset. The ice blocks can be six or seven feet tall, so you might want to hit the gym before your first day on the job. Your other duties? Maintaining trails and keeping watch on the resorts, cabins, employee dorms, etc. Hope you don't mind being alone. Yellowstone's early winter keepers were generally left to their own devices, and we're not talking smartphones. But if you love solitude and fresh powder, this could be the job for you. Number 10. Gabo Island Lighthouse Keeper Six hours from Melbourne in Australia and accessible only by plane or boat, it's the most remote work location in the state for Parks Victoria. Going to Gabo? Asked the man behind the counter of the only pub in town. The town in question being Malakuta, the easternmost community in Victoria. It's a fishing and holiday hamlet surrounded by some of Australia's most beautiful forests, beaches and waterways. And it's someone's job to maintain the iconic Gabo Island Lighthouse, the tallest in Australia and the ground surrounding it, meaning the keeper lives there. The job requires spending a month at a time on the island, lodged in the lighthouse keeper's residence, and despite being a perfectly livable accommodation, conditions around the lighthouse can be volatile. Yet that didn't stop the long line of men who'd have held the same keeper position since the lighthouse was built upon the island's iconic pink granite back in 1862. These days, the lighthouse keeper position is half janitor, half tour guide, Another suite can be rented by guests to enjoy the authentic lighthouse experience. The cottage caters up to eight people and comes loaded with all the amenities. Number 9. Warden of the Calf of Man Would you apply for a job on one of the most remote jobs in the British Isles? You might want to find a friend who needs a job as well because there are only two positions available. The two wardens of the Calf of Man would be the entire population of the presently uninhabited island off the Isle of Man for nine months straight. Do you think you've got what it takes? You'll have to fetch your own water and use a generator to access electrical power. Responsibilities include shepherding, bird ringing, and monitoring seal, rat, and moth populations. But the perks include basic accommodation and a small farmhouse of your very own. However, in severe weather, the island can be cut off from the Isle of Man for weeks and supplies are delivered by boat once a week. It's separated from the Isle of Man at the southern tip by a narrow stretch of water called the Calf Sound. Since 1959, it's been a bird sanctuary, looked after by two seasonal wardens who live there full-time nine months a year. But outside of the permanent animal residence on the calf, you can be joined by volunteers who stay for anything from a day up to a few weeks at a time. Number 8. Oshia Japan's Train Pushers In Japan, travel by rail is serious business. In fact, the country's public transit is a pillar of engineering prowess and stunning efficiency. There is, however, one job in transit that has much more basic requirements to be done successfully. No need for science or engineering degrees. All you need to be able to do is push and shove. 
Yeah, you heard that right. In the capital city of Tokyo, nearly 40 million passengers ride the rail or subway every day. Because Japan's public transit operates often with maxed out capacities, a person is required to make sure passengers get on safely and don't get caught on the door. These people are called Oshia, and if they have to, they'll literally push and shove till you are on the train, successfully. Bodies are pressed together so tightly against one another that most people can't physically move, and fire hazards and emergency evacuation are naturally a problem because of this. When pushers were first brought in to handle crowd control, they were called passenger arrangement staff, and believe it or not, the unusual practice began in America in the early 20th century and continues to this day in maxed out public transit stations in other parts of the world. Number 7. China's Electric Lineman The construction of an ultra-high voltage power transmission line in China is no joke. If you're sensitive about heights, we're going to assume this job is not for you. With a massive budget in excess of 300 million US dollars and consisting of more than 700 power towers at altitudes of up to 12,000 feet, these workers have their jobs cut out for them. You need to be a stuntman or a crazy person to feel comfortable at these altitudes. The maintenance staff risk their lives to scale power transmission lines effortlessly while being suspended hundreds of feet in the air. This cannot be easy, yet perhaps for them it is. These professionals are conducting safety checks on an ultra-high voltage power transmission line in the northwest of China, and the safety measures and courage it takes to complete the work is commendable. The men in hard hats are attached with safety harnesses, ascending the lofty towers like mountain climbers. One member of maintenance staff walks along a wire tightrope with the valley dipping thousands of feet below him. It's remarkable scenery, so the workers have a nice view to enjoy while working. You even take your breaks up there. Number 6. Water Slide Testers Attention all water babies and swimming enthusiasts. There might not be many full-time jobs on beaches, but this might be the next best thing. Did you know there's a role created by water parks and engineers that involves testing out water slides? It's more complicated than that, though. The water slide testers have to walk through the rides first and double-check the design concept, look for compromises in the slide's structural integrity, and ultimately make sure the slide is a safe ride of a lifetime for children of all ages. And they have to make these slide checks every day before they start pumping water through them. And since there are water slide parks all over the world, even students can get high-paying jobs, even flown to different locations to test them out. There's a few things you'll need to look out for, adrenaline factor or biggest splash, unique features and safety, of course, you know, water slide essentials. So far, there's no official water slide tester qualification that you can get started out on. However, we suggest knowing how to swim and maybe get your lifeguard certificate and maybe also invest in a good secure swim trunk or bathing suit. These water slide rapids can be epic. Number five, Concordia Station Researcher. A lot of the bravery required on our roster of jobs is because they require astounding periods of isolation. Could you handle being part of a team of people living on the edge of the world, all in the name of science? Outside your new office, the Concordia Station in Antarctica, the average temperature is about negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. The crew are surrounded by 621 miles of snow in all directions. This is your place of employment, and you and your crew may have not seen the sun in months. When you live a life covered in darkness, colors, smells, and sounds are almost non-existent. Crazy, right? At the very southern tip of Earth, the sun does not rise above the horizon in the winter and does not set in the summer. During the brutal winter, no help can be flown in or reach the base over land. You and your crew are on your own. For real. Electricity is produced with diesel generators and believe it or not, there is a power station out there too, but the fuel arrives to the station via an overland traverse which has traveled over 2,000 miles. The base was developed to research future missions to other planets. Bonus, Concordia Station does have access to the internet. Number 4. Nepali Honey Hunters Bees are essential to our planet for the role they play in maintaining the world's ecosystem, and they produce valuable honey, which creates jobs and feeds honey lovers around the globe. But could you be as brave as these honey harvesters? Nepalese honey hunters make insane vertical climbs to harvest it. Driving the bees out with thick smoke, they climb and joust dangerously at a nest, cutting the exposed honeycomb away from the cliff face. Once the honeycomb is safely in a basket, it then gets lower to the workers below. Another hunter watches from the base of the cliff as the cutter repositions himself on the rope ladder 200 feet above, and this is how they've been doing it for thousands of years. 
It's a tradition that's provided for communities generation after generation. What's so special about these bees? It's not just any old honey these bees produce. It's called mad honey. Besides being hallucinogenic, it's believed to relieve hypertension and is a natural way to increase energy. As a result, mad honey ranks amongst the most expensive honeys in the world. It sells for $60 to $80 a pound. It's a delicacy in Japan, and it's used in Chinese and Korean traditional medicines. Number 3. Underwater Welders Thinking of performing an important trade underwater? Maybe underwater welding is for you. It's not a typical job, but underwater welders aren't your typical crowd. However, there's a few commonalities among them. They're motivated with a mechanical mindset. Their troubleshooting game is next level, and they possess passion for construction projects. It doesn't hurt to be eager for bottom time. That's weld speak for in the water. Underwater welding is a hard job. Despite the dangers, thousands take on the responsibility of installing underwater structures, repairing pipelines for offshore oil drilling rigs, fixing ships, patching dams and subsea habitats near nuclear power facilities. Not your typical day at the office. Experience, technical skills, and physical strength are additional requirements you need in order to dive. If the safety procedures are not stringently enforced, fatal accidents are likely to occur. Underwater welding requires extensive training and specialized skills. Of course, as expected, underwater welding is an incredibly dangerous field of work. Proper preparations and practices need to be considered before a project is to be executed safely. However, despite the dangers, many take on this lucrative career. Number 2. Professional Mourners Rent a mourner? Are we for real? If you're thinking what we're thinking, that's a job that requires you to mourn strangers professionally and it sounds kind of depressing. Well, you're right, but the truth is there's an unusual logic behind the small business opportunity that is the professional mourner. Hear us out. Sometimes when families are too distraught to give eulogies or even greet other mourners, a renter mourner could assist. Or what if a loved one passes and their loved ones are mostly dead too? Or they had no friends. You can actually fill seats at the funeral home with a team of pro mourners. Paid mourning is nothing new, truth be told. The occupation originates from Egyptian, Chinese, and Mediterranean cultures. In fact, some cultures still think that the use of professional mourners brings a certain esteem to the proceedings in honor of the loved one's past. Now, mourners for hire companies are popping up around the globe. Professional mourners are not necessarily required to cry, but they are required to research the deceased. They often end up knowing more than the regular guests. It is, after all, an acting gig for most of them. Number 1. Snake Milkers When it comes to dangerous jobs, up there with a stuntman and astronauts, a professional snake milker quite literally takes a bite out of the competition. The snake milkers are often required to use their bare hand to extract venom from some of the world's most poisonous snakes, including vipers and king cobras. Venom has potential research properties, so biological scientists may be looking for specific genetic markers or attributes of the venom to test in a range of medical applications. Treatments and cures can often come from the most surprising of places. Specifically, venoms have been used to treat blood clots, combat blood pressure, and reduce heart attack risk. And they use venom to create anti-venom. However, it's just a dangerous and oddly traditional way to go about getting venom. In fact, a 2006 research paper published in Applied Herpetology estimated there are a total of 34 facilities in 21 countries that offer snake milking as a service. That means a very small number of very daring people are responsible for all the world's anti-venom. They're specially trained in handling these sensitive and protected animals, which often have legal protection. To become a snake milker requires many years of education and practice.